Hector is a top tier major league baseball pitcher. I think what strikes me the most talking with Hector is the amount of time that goes into baseball, into this, this, this sport that he so much loves that's become his job. He's down here for spring break and he has told me he has two days off. Two days off. That's absolutely insane. We all are used to working Monday through Friday. He's got two days off and then once regular season starts, it's full tilt. 150, 106, I don't know how many games there are, but it's pretty much nine months of his year, eight or nine months of his year are spent playing baseball. But I tell you, talking with him on those four months when he's off or those three or four months when he's off, he's fishing. And I'm not talking about fishing once a week. Hector's fishing every day. Is that real grass? No, it's turf, astro turf. I was about to say, damn, I wish my yard looked like that. <laughs> Talking with Hector, realizing the stresses, the pressures that he's under every day, I feel it. And I don't want to let on to it, but I'm having that same sort of anxiety, that, that same fear of not performing well, because we're on a strict timeline here. So I have a half a day to film the fishing segment of this show with Hector. That's all I have. There is no tomorrow. There is no coming back next week and doing it. He's leaving. I'm sitting on a full moon. I'm departing the dock at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. There's not many more variables that are going to go against me. Hector is super stressed at the ball field. He gets on the boat, he's relaxed. I was pretty relaxed at the ball field. I'm stressed now on the boat. All right, so we got about seven hours till dark. We spent the morning at the field. We just, uh, it's a typical day for you though, right? Morning at the field, afternoon, if you can get out and do a little fishing. Oh yeah, for sure, yeah. If I'm, you know, I have to be at the field and then if I have the opportunity to get out early like I did today, try yeah. to get out and get some fishing in. And that's kind of how we met. You know, I'm a guide in town. We, it's no secret, we went out and did a trip together and got to know each other. And it's pretty cool though that you have that passion for fishing. You know, it's talking to you and quickly realize that some guys go out and fish it, but it seems like on your off time, that's what something you want to be doing. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, my downtime is always on the boat or doing some type of fishing. I'm like I said, I, was, I said earlier, I was trying to learn different ways of fishing. You know, like off of, off a bridge or at a beach or or doing some weighted stuff. So I'm I'm always all about trying to learn new things and get out and catch some fish. I was amazed when we were talking about even your spring training schedule. You had you told me you had two days off all yeah. spring training. People don't realize it. They think oh, but and. Right from spring training, you go to games, and it's a hundred and something games. Yep, 162 so, games, yeah. What is nine months of your year are spent baseball? Baseball, well, I mean, the whole year, actually. I mean, off season, yeah, I mean, we're not playing games, but we're getting ready for the next season. So, I mean, I'm working out at 4.30 in the morning, so I wait by six o'clock, I'm on the boat going fishing. So, you know, you're, you're doing all that stuff and making, you know, making the sacrifice of getting up early, so that way you can enjoy the fishing part of your day. I know Hector's an offshore guy, and I wanted to get him offshore. We have a great offshore fishery here in this area, but again, half a day to get this done. Weather dependent, and the weather just won't allow it. Winds are blowing the day prior, seas are too big, big giant swell offshore. So formulating a plan, I know we're kind of stuck to inshore. Um, and that's not a bad thing. This area is great for inshore fishing. It's where I spend a majority of my time taking clients inshore snook fishing, and that's a, a popular thing. So that was kind of the game plan. We're gonna go maybe grab some live bait and hit a lot of heavy structure areas and try to target the snook that this area is known for. Oh, finally, a snook. Hector, that's what they look there like. There we go. <laughs> Never know it on a full moon. I had to eat eventually. Still not a giant, but better.
He's been caught before. Look at that. That's not his first rodeo. A little male there. So popular in this area. Hard not to fish for him, you know? We kind of had other plans, but get out here and you gotta, you gotta go with what's chewing. Oh, your bait's getting nervous. I think there's a strong parallel between the fishing and the baseball as far as preparation and the planning in your head for the day to come. But just like anything else, it doesn't always work out the way you want. Talking to Hector, he says some days his fastball is just not on or his breaking ball or, and you have to adapt. And it's the same thing with fishing. You have to have the ability to switch things up. If something's not working, you have to change it up. And today was just that day. It meant making a lot of different moves, trying a lot of different things, but ultimately what you, you try to settle in with something that's working. Whether on the baseball field, whether you're out fishing, you find that pattern that's working and you go with it. Damn, never seen it from this angle. <laughs> Being down on the field is different. That's gotta be different ball game. Pretty yeah. cool though, and it's and it's funny because like when I'm here, like and then sometimes I'll, I'll be done for the day, and I'll go sit in the stands and want to watch it from there. So like you know, you, I, I love seeing both sides of it. Like I said, like I, I watched it as a kid growing up, like going to Yankee Stadium, going to uh, Shea Stadium, and um, you know watching it from like upper tank, you know, for twelve buck tickets, and then coming down on the field is like, oh man, it's so different. But then you, as a player, you still want, I, got, I at least want to see it from the opposite side. Like I, I pitched in, what did I pitch? I, I think it was against the Astros. I pitched one inning. I came up and I went and sat in the stands with my wife and her family and we just watched like four or five innings of the game and then we left. But, you know, like it, it, everybody always thinks like, oh, you're, you're on the field, it's the best. And sometimes you just want to go up there and, you know, see it from the outside. I uh, grew up in Newark, New Jersey. Um, my father played softball. He was always around the ballpark. He was an umpire. He did a lot of stuff with the recreation baseball back home in Newark, and I kind of got kind of grown into it, and I fell in love with the game. I went on and played high school high school baseball. I got drafted by the White Sox in 2006. Went down to school in Florida for one year. Um, winded up signing professionally after that, and ever since then it's been all baseball all the time. Just toss me a soft one. And listen, don't hit me in the nuts. <laughs> Oh God. Ready? <laughs> Not hard. Please. Wow. I can't imagine that coming twice. <laughs> Sorry. Now like how fast is that? 50, 45? Maybe? I don't even think. I don't so think you're that twice fast. that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if the radar gun's gonna read that. Maybe 40. <laughs> is it hard for you to throw that slow? Yeah, I feel uncomfortable. Usually when you're when you're on this mountain, you're usually throwing pretty hard. You're whipping it. Full moon, middle of the afternoon meant that we had to adapt and had to change a bunch of different things. Really, one of the most successful techniques is to live bait heavy structure. It's, it's where the snook live. And even in days when they don't want to eat, a lot of times if you get that bait down to them, if you're able to present it to them, they're going to take it. You're throwing in heavy, heavy structured areas, heavy tackle, you know, 50 pound braided line, 80 pound you know, top knot leader, just lock down drags in heavy structure spot because I, I, I realized today we weren't going to get a lot of bites. The bites that we got, we needed to capitalize on and we needed to have the ability to land those fish. There it is. Now they're turning on. Oh, that full moon, we talked about it, you know, it's going to shut it down early, midday. Coming back on now. Nice snook, getting better. Hook out. Oh. Oh. 
Oh, look at that catch. Huh? He came off the hook and came I grabbed him. So Florida snook is the prize fish down here? Yeah, inshore. Boom. Man, you see why. <laughs> That's yep. it right there. Great eating, hard fighting. You know, you, you don't get much better than a snook inshore. Oh, yeah. And this is the perfect place for it. Home of the Mets and the home of the snook. <laughs> Probably around 13 years old. My father uh, took us out a couple times. He had no idea what he was doing. We went to Walmart or somewhere and bought some, uh, some fishing rods, a couple hooks. And I think we, our first weight that we bought to go bottom fishing was like 16 ounces. And we had no idea what we were doing. We bought some worms, put them on a hook and dropped them down to the bottom of the ocean. And we wound up catching some flounder and fluke. Uh, I think we caught some black sea bass. And it was, it was something that I just, I love the fact that I was just throwing somewhere blind, had no idea what was gonna come up. And I got an adrenaline rush every time that, that rod bent. And I just kind of fell in love with it. It became another, almost another sport for me. I mean, you know, it was a lot of sport fishing and it became a, a I love that feeling of that little adrenaline of you're fighting something and you're not knowing exactly what you're bringing up. And um, it, I, I got good at it. I mean, my father wasn't, like I said, he wasn't great. He didn't have an idea of what was going on, but we just kept going out there and kept going out there. And over the years, we went from doing that to fishing in waders, fishing in rivers, uh, top water stuff. And then I did, now I do a lot of offshore stuff. I, I wound up getting my own boat a couple years ago and I'm able to get out there and do all kinds of different types of fishing. But it's something that my father kind of just did it for fun as to keep us out of, the, out of the streets and take us out on the water, have some fun, hang out and something I fell in love with became a passion of mine. Oh, 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 get him out of there, get him out of there, real, real, real down. Let him, just kind of back off him for a second. He's got you around something, so just back off him. Give him slack. Let's get this one out. Yep, you got him out. Yep, you got him out. Get him out, get him out. Nice, good job getting him out of there. Man, he had you around that piling. Nice fish. He had you around that, that top knot, man, that leader. Oh, he's barely hooked. There we go. And he had you all around those pilings right there. You did, yeah. You did right, man. You just backed off on him, he swam out, and. Boom. Out of there. Yep. Nice snook. You know, we were fishing with George. We caught some some snook. A bunch of different techniques. A bunch of different things that we uh, that we did that kind of um, showed me a, a new a new way to fish. I mean, I, I don't like I said, I don't do much inshore fishing, but it's something that I wanted to learn how to do. That way, I have another option or a different type of fishing that I get to learn and experience and do it at home when I'm during the off season. So that's, Hector, that's typical snook right there, man. Rip you into the structure, but you did the right thing. Backing off on him like you did. Otherwise, if you start pulling, boom, he would have broke right broke off. Broke right off, yeah. That top knot held though, man. It's just 60 pounds, but did the job. Oh yeah, did the job for sure. Mercury Marine has been the leader in outboard technology for years, and now they've even taken it to the next level. Now with the Vessel View mobile app, my smartphone has the ability to monitor exactly what's going on in my motor. All this is customizable too. I can put in there the information that I want to see. With analog gauges, you don't get a lot of this information. Now you get an accurate digital readout without having the expense of buying the Vessel View for your boat. I get engine speed, RPM, fuel consumption, fuel use, engine temperature. I can also see maintenance schedule and read fault codes that the motor may have. There's also the ability to take snapshot photos so I can share this information on social media. One module works up to quads. So I can get one module on my phone monitor up to four motors at one time. 
Installation of the VesselView mobile app is simple. With an easy download through your app store and a quick plug of a module on your motor, you're set to go to get all the information that you need. It seems like every national baseball team has a spring training facility in Florida. I mean, it's just, it's great weather in the winter time. It's a great destination for people to come. And fortunate enough, in my backyard, I have the New York Mets. And, you know, that's, that's a unique opportunity to have a major league team in a small town. And I'm fortunate enough to have taken, you know, multiple players from the team fishing before. A lot of these guys have the passion for fishing. You know, I've taken David Wright, you know, former captain, and Noah Syndergaard, another pitcher, and now have the ability to spend some time on the boat with Hector Santiago. Hector is just about as laid back as they come. If you were to meet this guy, you wouldn't know the fame that he has. You wouldn't know the notoriety. You wouldn't know the history. You wouldn't know he's a major league baseball player. You wouldn't know the stresses that he has every day. To get him on the boat, all he talked about was fishing. He talked about his, his time in Puerto Rico and the fish that he catches there and, and the trips that he's done. And, and that's the cool thing. We, it's, it pretty much levels the playing field when you get out on the boat and you get these, these guys away from the ball field. It's, baseball really is no longer important. And you share another bond. You share the outdoors, you share fishing, and you kind of, you forget about what they really do. And that's pretty cool. Me as a, you know, just as a fishing guide, I can spend time with some of the most elite athletes and just cut it up and not even, not even discuss baseball, but just talk about fishing. It's been about 12 hours since the moon, full moon has set. And a lot of times what you'll find in full moon situations is the fish will bite fairly well early in the morning and late in the evening. Even more so than normal, just first hour, that last hour of the day. And I wanted to try to capitalize on that, have the ability that we were on a good trout bite here recently, wanted to get up in the area where there was a lot of bait, kind of a protected cove, and wanted to be able to pull out the Yozuri hydro pencils and just fire them out there and try to get that top wire bite. And this is the time to do it. These low light conditions, when the sun is going down and the sun is just coming up, these are the times that you want to pull out something like this, a top water plug, and try to target these fish with this technique. Did the one thing I said don't do. Oh, nice, good one, easy now. Got really soft mouths. <laughs> he blew up on that thing. <laughs> he knocked that plug sideways. I was getting one at the same exact time. I think I power pulled down here. You just got in a little area. Nice little hole, a little action there too. Nice little trout. Just back in this cove and all this bait. It's that perfect time, you know, the evening to be throwing that Yozuri. Good job, brother. That's what we needed, a little trout action. Got him. Now you get that giant now. The giants are in here. I found a parallel between our day on the water and what Hector must experience on the mound at the ball field. Things were challenging at first. We had a lot of adversity, a lot of elements going against us. You know, and I'm sure when Hector steps up to that mound and throws that first inning, it always doesn't go his way. Maybe a couple balls go in a different direction than he wants to go, and he gets the hits on him that he didn't want to get. And I felt like that's how our, our day started. The wind was up, the fish weren't chewing. The wind, you know, it was so many variables that were against us, but we stuck with it, just as if Hector has to stick through the innings of pitching and find what works, adapt, change and that's what happened that's what we did and i tell you the wind began to die the clouds cleared and the fish started chewing and it ended up being a beautiful end to a perfect day 
with a guy that I can now call my friend.